uh, which I'm going to you know upload tonight. So let's start with the third um, critic or the writer, which is Horace, after uh, Aristotle. Horace, uh, I think uh, we have you know we you must have heard of the name, uh, but obviously we we don't we haven't read them in detail. Uh, you guys um, mustn't have you know read them in detail as well because the most important ones are only plato and aristotle they they, they are actually taught uh, almost by everyone can you see the slides uh, rubina yes ma'am all right yes, ma uh, okay thank you Horace, uh, um, the year is from 65 to 8 bc so we're going to do the works of criticism and the main concepts of the writers so that we can move quickly so um his works of criticism were from ars uh, poetica this was the name ars po poetica that is the art of poetry and a personal letter um it is possible to gain an understanding of his views with respect to literature he might not have read uh, written a lot of you know books but one book and then uh, one of the personal letter in which he talked about uh, literature. And the main concepts are in these texts, whereas aims to provide a guideline on how to be a good writer. His advices uh, basically uh, include that poets should imitate other poets, which actually were said by the Greek philosophers, um, all of the, almost all the Greek philosophers, that should uh, poets should imitate the other poets, especially the poets of the past and particularly the Greeks. And they should write about traditional subjects in a in in unique ways so traditional uh, conventional subjects uh, which are um, uh, closer to the society they, they should be talked about in a unique way should avoid all extremes in subject matter uh, i mean whenever they are talking about uh, a beautiful thing uh, they shouldn't phrase it so much uh, that is to bring in exaggeration fiction in it so same is the case uh, other way around so extreme should be avoided this is um, what uh, he, he uh, actually emphasizes on and the last point is that should avoid appearing ridiculous and must therefore aim their sights low not attempting to be a new virgil or homer so uh, i don't know if you guys uh, believe in that or not uh, people always should aim high uh, but uh, for for uh, from his point of view whereas he's saying that um, at least you know maybe he's trying to say that one uh, one should go one step uh, step one step at a time instead of you know jumping to something uh, new or aiming for very high things uh, that would make uh, the the work and him uh, both of them that uh, that would make them ridiculous and the work uh, that they are writing that uh, might also appear ridiculous as well because sometimes we want to achieve very high but um, we end up uh, being not clear unclear and uh, illogical as well which might make the uh, work actually uh, appear as ridiculous as well so there's no need to be uh, you know become a new virgil or homer you can make your own work unique as well all right the main area of interest in criticism are literary taste so the way he used to criticize um, the work of uh, art and work of literature of the other poets or writers was literary taste, namely the features that make the literary work good. So every, you know, in the past, every writer, every critic had different way of, you know, criticizing. So his main area of interest in criticism was literary taste. And uh, at catchphrase, uh, his most important uh, sentence or famous sentence is that literature's ultimate aim is to teach and delight. And this is uh, what he actually uh, said. And he has said this, uh, this thing in here as well, uh, at the top of the slide. Literature's ultimate aim is to be sweet and useful. Right? And therefore, it is the task of the poet to aim for the, bo of the both in, the, in his works. He should uh, aim to teach and delight. This is what is written here. This is the catchphrase of uh, Ures. Next uh, is uh, Longinus after Horace. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, wo ijaz kain ko to Latin kar dema message. Haan ji, bol. Has he left the meeting? Ma'am, wo uska koi issue aa raha hai. So, who who is this? Like Vito to GST outside university.
इजाज़ है मैम वीटो वाला I'm going back to longinus again. So uh, after Horace, uh, that was in 65 BC to 8 BCE. After Horace, uh, the the next writer or critic who became famous was Longinus. So please keep keep up with me, and Ijaz can get the recording afterward. So works of criticism was actually on the sublime. Uh, this is the title of his book, On the Sublime. Thank. Right? And it was very famous. It's still very famous. Main concepts were uh, one cannot accurately judge. Ji, whose mic is on? I will remove you guys from the meeting if you're going to disturb the class like this. Mohammad Shweb. So, um, main concepts are one cannot accurately judge a literary work unless one is exceedingly well read. This is his main concept that you cannot, um, that there were like people before him and then after him as well who uh, judged or crit critically evaluated. The works through you know one uh, main uh, aspect just like Horace he, he uh, looked at the you know literary taste of the writer or the author in order to critically evaluate so but according to longinus one cannot accurately judge a literary work unless longinus names are sublime this is still of the book that he has Ma'am, your voice is called, I mean, he calls a great work as work worthy. Rubina? Yes, ma'am. Is it still not clear? The voice. Now it's clear. Okay, let me change the connection, guys. It was distorted at that time. Is it clear now? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. So um, he calls a great work as sublime. Sublime is not just the work um, that he has written. Uh, I mean, the work that he has written is also sublime. It, the name of that work is sublime. And then um, what he he also calls great work as sublime too. So this is an aspiration for higher or for something more divine than we. So anyways, I mean, th he explains this thing, this word sublime as well, that he, we should, or the writers should, or the poets should aim for something higher, aspiration for something higher, and something more than divine, uh, you know, more divine than we. So he, he asks uh, the ri writers or the authors to uh, go for a great work, which he calls uh, sublime as well. And then he says, all readers, Possess the innate capacity to recognize it. Find the readers that we, uh, when we are reading something, we also 
uh, are able to understand or uh, we are able to recognize uh, a sublime work i mean if the work is sublime if the work has uh, um, divine uh, divinity or if it is it has uh, uh, the higher uh, elements then we can recognize it when we are reading it the harmonious response of our intellects emotions and wills to a work of art means that we have been touched by the sublime so when we are reading uh, as readers uh, we also you know uh, can connect our intellect and emotions and wills to that work as well so uh, it's not just the writer and the author that is touched by the sublime but we as readers are also touched by the sublime so uh, the uh, best way i mean uh, for him to find the criticism or critically evaluate the work for longinus was to find um, sublimity um, in in the work and uh, he wanted to find something that is innate in the work or something some some elements that are closer to the higher power uh, then the author must possess a great mind and a great soul the text must be composed of dignified and elevated dig diction disposing the reader to high th high thoughts so that was uh, of, uh, you know the first century's time in which um the the writers use very flowery language very dignified and very elevated uh, diction or language uh, especially the old english language that was very difficult to understand had a lot of um dignified words uh, a lot of complex and you know uh, difficult words especially borrowed from the french language so which made uh, difficult to you know read which made the text difficult to read but uh, this is what he was interested in longinus that uh, and he wanted people and he wanted the poets to write as such as well main area of interest in criticism was single elements of a text any single element of a text um like he said sublimity and you know the uh, the um higher elements if they are there in the in in the text uh, in the uh, write, writing uh then he would you know uh, take that one aspect and uh, use it uh, use it for the criticism uh importance is that he is the first literary critic to quote in his writings from a different tradition than his own that is from hebrew so he had given references from other literary uh other works of the other times as well like from hebrew that is from that is um the jewish language uh in israel so he was the first one to quote from other uh, traditions as well not just his own uh, era and uh, not uh, not just just from the writings of of his own english and the greek writers but from the other traditions as well in that he deserves the title of the first comparative critic as well because when you are quoting from other cultures and other traditions and other uh, languages then it becomes a comparative uh, study as well and his critical method and concepts can be seen as foreshadowing very schools of literary criticisms as well even in the 20th century so longinus was actually more important and more uh, respected especially for his uh, you know this title sublime and the uh, sublimity uh, for using sublimity for uh, for for criticism as well and then for comparative for criticism as well so he he is actually uh, still known um in, even in the 20th, 20th century especially in new criticism and reader oriented criticism which we are going to read further these theories that we are going to read further okay then comes plotinus which is the most important person uh, i mean there are other people who are important as well wordsworth and after that uh, you know the writers after that the poets coming after that but plotinus uh, also set a um, new tradition uh, by introducing that uh, concept that is a new platonic platonism and uh, his works of crit criticisms are uh, actually he penned 54 treatises that is you know agreements um between the states he has uh, written down 54 agreements most probably uh, posthumously collected that is after uh, when he when he died after his death they were these were collected after his death and they were edited and given the name as enids no oh, sorry enids so this is the you know the book uh, which was named as and which has the collection of all of his treaties or you know agreements uh, because the, and they are considered as the part of uh, literature as well so his concept was uh, the philosophy uh, which was actually uh, already originated it was originated by plato and plato as you remember he talked about the Uh, real and the forms right so his uh, plotinus's view is almost the same but 
it is a mixture of greek and uh, christian uh, doctrine the greek doctrine and the christian doctrine it's a mixture of both of them and uh, so, so he says that uh, there are like uh, he gives three points uh, he gives two just like the real and the forms he says there is a uh, unity with the one there is um, the, uh, he gives the concept of one as well the one uh, that is the uh, principal reality, the one, and uh, uh, someone who has uh, higher power, some something, some higher being, that is the one. And then, uh, which is the goal of the humanity? For hum this is what is written here: unity with the one is the goal of the humanity. This is uh, his philosophy. For humanity exists in other forms of being, such as uh, intelligence, soul, and matter that stem out or out from uh, but are separate from it so again um, if we talk about uh, if we take that um, um, the, the concept of plato again uh, the real real is actually the one uh, the good or the one which he has uh, which, which he also calls uh, here we won't go into detail of that uh, philosophy again because it's uh, so much in detail just like plato's philosophy so uh, he he has three points. One is the one, which is the real. Right? Um, he calls it the one, the reality, the actual real. And then the second one is the matter, not the, not the soul first. Pele pele matter aega, which is actually the uh, uh, the image of the one, right? the perfect image of the one. That is the matter, just like uh, the form, which is the which is actually the. Uh, image of the real okay and then comes the soul which is actually the world soul which according to plotinus is the immaterial and uh, it's um, uh, it's actually again the uh, it's not uh, the perfect copy it is the imperfect copy of the matter itself okay pehle aata the one Then comes the matter, which is the copy of the one. And then comes the soul, the world soul, the physical world in which we are saying, uh, in which we are living. And that is the, of the copy. And we won't go into detail. If you need uh, more information, we can discuss it some other time. Or uh, again, you can search it on Google as well. But you won't get you know, questions on, on the theory of uh, or philosophy of Plotinus or the new Platonism, new Platonism, we won't go, you won't get any question on that. Just remember that this theory is basically derived from Plato's theory, philosophy, sorry. This philosophy is derived from Plato's philosophy. Let me know why she's shaking. Uh, and it's not.
So I hope the voice is clear now. Yes, ma'am. Has अगर आपको next class का मतलब फिकर है, so you can please leave the class and uh, you can join the next class. वैसे भी आप ज़्यादातर लेटे ही होते हैं. All right, guys. Um, sorry about the connection. I don't know what is the problem today. Um, they don't let us sit in the university now because you know of the fifty percent uh, staff has been you know uh, is allowed to sit. Otherwise, I would have taken class from there. उसमें नेट का थोड़ा सा इशू नहीं होता वहाँ पे. All right. So we were on. Uh, we we're done with Plotinus. Uh, um, almost almost done. Is it clear, guys? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, you were saying okay, something. Okay, just let me know if. Okay, right. Yes, I haven't finished that. Uh, I was about to finish it. So, yes, uh, about the new Platonism, uh, you don't have to go into detail of it. Just remember this thing that it's the combination of the Greek doctrine and uh, the Christian doctrine, and uh, uh, just like you know the God, the Son, and the Soul. ये क्रिश्चियनिटी में है ना बेसिकली सो द गॉड इज एक्चुअली द वन आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सन ऑब्वियसली गॉड फॉर बिट बट द मैटर व्हिच इज द द परफेक्ट इमेज ऑफ द वन एंड देन कम्स द सोल व्हिच इज द वर्ल्ड सोल मतलब एंड दैट वर्ल्ड सोल इज एक्चुअली द पीपल लिविंग ऑन द सोल बिकॉज अकॉर्डिंग टू क्रिश्चियनिटी the jesus christ as the hazrat isa islam he cru was cru crucified for the sins of the people so he gave his soul uh, to spare the souls of the you know people or the world right so that soul is actually the physical world uh, in which the people are living and uh, that is uh, the imperfect uh, copy of uh, the matter right copy of the copy so there, there is the one which is uh, actually Called as the the which is the God actually, but in usko the one कहते हैं which is the humanity the goal of humanity. Then comes the matter which is the copy of the one and then the soul. So actually it's actually the mixture of the uh, Greek doctrine and the Christian doctrine. No need to go into so much detail of it. Just remember that this was actually uh, he founded New Plat Platonism, Plotinus, Plot and his works were actually written. Uh, sorry, his works were read by uh, so many. uh different cultures and traditions uh at one place it's written that uh, all the you know the arabs and the muslims and the the, the chinese they also read this uh, because uh, his doctrine actually became very famous which is actually the uh, foundation of the modern um, you know christianity as well um, that is catholicism uh, the concept of the three the three uh, that is one god and the soul i hope it's clear Yes, okay so the thinkers and, thank you so much the thinkers and authors of the subsequent centuries adopted and adapted his philosophy into their own systems of thought that is from saint augustine to boethius in the 4th and 5th centuries then to the american romantics henry david thoreau and uh, ralph waldo emerson so these are the people who actually uh, took his philosophy adopted it and then adapted it and then you know the modern christians they also believe in this philosophy or this uh, the this uh, three three uh, points or three unities not unities so usko kahenge three uh, divisions the one the uh, the god the sun and the soul so these people uh, you know they were affected so plotinus had become really famous and um, you know still we don't know i mean uh, when we normally talk about the writers and the critics we uh, are not aware of plotinus's name unless and we but we know this thing that the three you know divisions that are made um uh, trinity trinity about in in christianity but we don't know who laid that the idea the concept the trinity so it was actually plotinus all right then coming to the middle ages now and that is dante uh, whose works of criticism were uh, actually a letter to can grand della scala and originally a letter in which he explains his literary theory so even that letter one letter was actually enough to uh, help us understand his um, his his ideas about the literary theory or criticism 
so the main concepts were uh, main concepts of dante was uh, the language spoken by the people that is the common language language of the common man or the language of the common people so before dante everybody every poet every author was using very uh, you know elevated dignified and uh, very complicated uh, language complicated language and uh, after some times uh, the and from this point onwards they realized that the you know uh, the language of poetry and the language of the uh, plays should be the language of the common people fine so the language spoken by the people is an appropriate and beautiful language writing this is what was the concept of uh, dante so romanticism actually started from you know uh, this point we can say because there is no fixed uh, point uh, where we can say that uh, this is this was the start of romanticism or romantic era uh, and uh, that you know people started believing that language of the common people should be the uh, should be used uh, as as uh, should be the uh, language of poetry and the uh, plays as well so it had started in the middle ages but uh, with the passage of time people realized it afterwards so number 2 is allegory and symbolic language and techniques used in religious writings can be used in secular works as well so symbolic language and you know literary terms allegory techniques they should be used in in uh, secular works as well so these were the two main concepts and what is the main area of interest in criticism is the proper language of poetry and the proper language uh, a means of expression in literature thus paving the way for an increase in audience so proper language would be the uh, language of the common people and uh, not just uh, elevated and you know the difficult language the dignified language but common language to middle ages uh, this is the renaissance time and the next uh, writer is giovanni boccaccio again he ha he is a famous writer uh, and critic as well but uh, most of the people they haven't uh, heard about him uh, just like protinus so works of criticism is the the and again genti would be called period and especially of uh, giovanni can't hear you ma'am both truth and because he again goes back would definitely be closer to ma'am ma'am ke baat yes sorry to interrupt ma'am again aapki uh, voice distorted ho gayi hai is we speaking ma'am what एक्चुअली आज वो रिहर्सल भी चल रही है ना बिकॉज ऑफ दैट प्रेड और आज मेरा ख्याल है कुछ हालांकि रिहर्सल तो हो चुकी है लेकिन जब ये जब भी रिहर्सल होती है ना तो डिस्ट्रॉक्शन होती है मतलब उस दिन नेट में बहुत ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम होती है मैं कोई तीन कनेक्शन चेंज कर चुकी हूँ डेडा पैकेज भी है और दो इंटरनेट कनेक्शन है घर में पी टी सी एल का भी और एक और भी है बट ऑल थ्री ऑफ दैम आर नॉट वेरी स्टेबल आई गेस थोड़ी देर चलते हैं और उसके बाद फिर वो कोई प्रॉब्लम आ जाती है अभी आवाज क्लियर है और आई सो लेट्स फिनिश विद दिस राइटर एंड देन आई थिंक वी कुड वी कुड स्टॉप एट फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव और फाइव थर्टी वी विल स्टॉप सो दैट दोज हु कुड नॉट अटेंड दे डोंट फील बैड एज वेल देखिए आप पूरा पूरा महीना के बाद आते हैं विदाउट एनी इंफॉर्मेशन विदाउट एनी प्रीवियस इंटीमेशन ना कोऑर्डिनेटर को पता है ना टीचर्स को पता है 
نہ سیئرز نے کچھ بتایا ہوا ہے اور آپ مطلب ایسے ہی آگے اور کہہ رہے ہیں کہ جی بس میرا دل نہیں کیا آئی واز آؤٹ آف سٹی سو دیٹ ووڈ میک اینی ون میڈ فائن اینڈ یس آئی ریموو ہم فروم دا میٹنگ ہی ول کم ان دا نیکسٹ میٹنگ بٹ ناٹ ان دس میٹنگ دیر از نو اسپیسیفک ریزن فار ہم ناٹ ٹو یو نو جوائن دا کلاس فار ایٹ لیسٹ ون منتھ اینڈ دین یو آر ناٹ فیلنگ ایون بیڈ اباؤٹ اٹ مطلب آپ کے سی آر پھر بھی میرے خیال چار یا پانچ دن کے بعد آ گئے تھے تارک بٹ دا پیپل ہو آر کمنگ آفٹر ون منتھ دیر از نو ایکسکیوز دیر از نو ریزن بہائنڈ اٹ اینڈ دین یو آر ہیو سچ گرڈس ٹو سی ان فرنٹ آف دا ٹیچر کہ ہاں جی ہم میں نہیں آیا تھا سو اینی ویز اس کو میٹنگ کو جلدی ختم کر لیتے ہیں سو دیٹ ادی پیپل آر ناٹ یو نو دے ڈونٹ فیل بیڈ اباؤٹ اٹ از ویل کہ جی ہم نے مس کر دیا All right, so uh, Giovanni Bukesio um, was the person, uh, was the writer who actually talked about the gods of the Greeks and Roman. And his main concept was the purpose of poetry is to improve life by revealing both truth and God because he was closer to the gods than religion, I guess. So that's why he uh, started writing uh, on, you know, he talked that the purpose of poetry is to uh, reveal the truth. And then poets are similar to philosophers, according to him, in that they seek truth through contemplation rather than reason. So poetry is basically written in a, in a state of mind when, where there is a lot of, you know, uh, silence everywhere. And then the poet has to contemplate. So sometimes also uh, through reason as well. There are people who write poetry by using their reason and by using their wis- wisdom as well. Uh, if that poetry talks about the, you know, Uh, reality about uh, the wars of the present time uh, about the real uh, you know age that is going on kuch aise bhi point kuch aise bhi poems hote hain that actually talk about the uh, real life as well so ma'am. if that is ji ma'am inki jo philosophy inka koi proper naam nahi hai um these were not th- this is not a philosophy and this is the main concept of uh, uh, bukesio Uh, the important philosophy um, after Plato's philosophy was Plotinus's philosophy, which is called Neoplatonism. After that, there are ages in which these writers or these critics, you can say, they have become very famous. Obviously, these are the writers and poets as, uh, themselves as well. Uh, they have written some works, but they also um, uh, did some critical evaluation as well. انہوں نے کرٹیسزم بھی کیا ہے اینڈ دے ہیو گیون دیر تھاٹس اباؤٹ کرٹیسزم ہاؤ ہاؤ ادر ورکس ادر آتھرز اینڈ پوائٹس ورک شوڈ بی کرٹیسائز آئی ایم ایکچولی ڈوئنگ اٹ ویری پرسائز سو دیٹ یو نو وی کین کور موسٹ آف دی سوری وی کین کور موسٹ آف دی دیز رائٹرز اینڈ بیکاز دے آر آل انکلوڈیڈ ان یور سلیبس ایز ویل سو Giovanni actually talked about that poets are equal to theologians, that is, um, the people who are closer to the, the uh, di- divinity, right? Poets are equal to theologians in, in that they seek knowledge about God himself and find it in allegory. So his concept of poetry and poets is totally different from the rest of the people, especially from Dante, because uh, obviously uh, from this point onward, Dante is actually mo- moving forwards. in middle ages he is moving forward and he says that the language of poetry should be the language of the common men and poetry as, as well as place and then isse matlab aage jana chahiye tha but uh, again uh, giovanni goes back to the greek times as well and he tries to relate his work or maybe he believes he still believes that uh, the poets or the poetry should be written about gods and the truth so uh, not maybe so many gods but maybe one god and uh, uh you know the the way uh, like uh, Suf- sufis they write about uh, gods and the po- uh, in in their poetry so giovanni was uh, that kind of a, a person okay then comes the sir philip sydney this is the last uh, writer we'll do today uh works of criticism is an apology for poetry very very famous i think you must have heard it somewhere or maybe you must have read it somewhere Uh, it's originally yeah. defense of poesy padha hai aap logon ne ji ma'am uh in which semester fifth ma'am sixth semester so it fifth, was fifth, uh, fifth, ma'am five all right so it was uh, uh, a long poem or it was a kind of epic 
मैम इसकी फिलोसफी का पढ़ा था कि मतलब इसका ये जो लिटरेरी क्रिटिसिज्म पे नहीं थी जी जी इसके बारे में पढ़ा था मतलब आपका नाम क्या सॉरी मेरा मैम जी जी आपका नाम मोहम्मद ए बसन मैम अच्छा तैयब यस सो व्हाट वाज द फिलोसफी अबाउट और इट्स हिज कांसेप्ट मैम अब तो मैं भूल गया हूं ऑल राइट ऑल राइट सो इट वाज जस्ट लाइक पढ़ा था राइट राइट सो इट वाज एक्चुअली जस्ट लाइक प्लेटो एंड एरिस्टोटल uh you can see the main concepts here if you can see this line poetry is an art of imitation as defined by aristotle with the concepts of mimesis this is what actually sir philip sydney also believed in and uh, uh sydney's sources they they include plato aristotle and horace and this these are the sources of sydney's writing so obviously he believed in the same thing that you know plato actually believed in or or aristotle believed in which is poetry is an is an art of imitation as defined by aristotle and then poetry is not a mindless or immoral activity i i think isne hi kaha tha ki jo poetry ki language poetry ki language hai wo easy honi chahiye wo matlab common is tarah aur aise ho ke logon ko samajh mein aaye okay yaar humne yahi difference of poetry padhi thi यूजिंग कॉमन लैंग्वेज Uh, the language of uh, the common people and then he talked about poetry is more valuable than history law and philosophy and it embodies the truth about all other arts and sciences uh, so even poetry talks about that time period where where, where uh, when the poet is living so obviously he talks about so many different things not just uh, uh, conceptually but also uh, having some some fictional fictional fictionality in that as well and then he talks about the unities of time place and action which are the elements of tragedy just like aristotle uh, creative poetry is similar to religion for both function through stirring the emotions of the reader so this this is um, he was in favor of creative poetry as well and he he talked about the same thing as as aristotle actually mentioned and talked about and then poets affirm morality blend truth with symbolism and give delight this is what the function of poetry or poets is according to um, sir philip sydney that they talk about morality but blend the truth with symbolism as well that they should use they actually use symbolism in order to reveal the truth reveal god and transcendentalism which is going to uh, come next as well and main area of interest is uh, in criticism is the function of poetry which he actually talks about that uh, you know the poetry's function should be to reveal uh, to delight and to teach the truth so the influence is the english tradition and history of literary criticism begins with sydney this is the actual um, you know the importance of sydney's works that the english tradition and history of criticism uh, begins with not the greek uh, criticism which actually begins with aristotle uh, we're not talking about the uh, classical poets but the english criticism begins with the sydney's works i think it's clear Yes, All right, guys. Yes, sorry about the internet today. And um, ma'am, ma Ismat is uh, saying that uh, am I taking the class or not? So I'll just message her. Yes, I am taking. 